Are you ready? Yes. I don't know if I don't know what to do. <laughs> Praise God, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for Holy Ghost moves of God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, do you work today? Glory, glory, glory. Glory to God. Uh, let's see what the Holy Ghost might have might have ministered to me today oh yes yeah I know there's some there's some stuff in here some stuff in here praise God my Jesus my Jesus Oh, ushers come and we're going to minister in, in giving. Just, just hang on to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes my giving necessitates that I make a choice of buying something I was planning on buying or giving. And sowing and believing that God is what you want. Uh, thank you, sir. But believing God to do something big. You say, Pastor, I got something I was really wanting to buy, but I'm kind of feeling a nudge. Maybe I need to give today. <clears throat> Don't give emotionally. No. All right? If you feel led by the Spirit to give, because the enemy will probably try to attack you this afternoon or tomorrow about it. If you hadn't have given that, you'd be all right. If you hadn't have done that, you'd be okay. But if the Spirit led you to give it, you're going to be okay anyway. That's right. Hallelujah. You're going to be okay. We're going to let this little light shine. We're going to let this little light shine. And tithe... We're going to always pay our tithe. And uh, we're going to be sowers of seed so we can reap harvest. Now, there, I'm going to preach maybe, may share a little bit. Don't, don't know just what yet. The Holy Ghost is just doing some things here. But there's a division coming in America, a division in the world a division in the church. You say, what kind of division? Well, we've got a lot of churches in America that people claim to be Christians and never read the Bible. I mean, not, not read any part of it. The only, time, the only verse they hear is maybe what a preacher, if he uses the word, says in church. And we got a lot of we got a lot of church people. Well, God loves everybody. Yeah, He does. He died for their sins, that they might be delivered from their sins and get saved and go to heaven. Because everybody's not going to heaven. Let me just go ahead and throw that apple cart over. Everybody is not going. So, Pastor, that's not a happy message. It is for those who get saved. It is for those who, who give their heart to Jesus and life starts turning around. Yeah, come on. It starts turning around. 
because you chose to serve him. Now, e- even in the offering time, there's people, uh, it's not, tithing's not biblical, sowing seed's not biblical. Right, you stay over there. Yeah. Stay in your little happy place. We're, we're in the battle. Yeah, we're in, we're in the battle when the economy inflation is up. See, so Pastor, what? Even when inflation's up, you still push tithing. I present tithing. Right. If you want, no matter what the economy's doing, your tithing says you're going to be good to go. Yes. You're going to be good to go. True. Amen. Yeah. And <clears throat> money money turns things around. I'm going to tell on you. Well, I'm going to tell on me. <laughs> this morning we're, we're getting ready. And uh, I mentioned something about, anyway, <clears throat> she's, she said, Natalie said, you said I look fat. I said, no, I didn't. I, I didn't. I, I did not. She said it's the same thing. But I did not say that, Kim. I did not. That's not important right now. But I said something, and she said, you said I look fat. And she looked... So, See, so I, I hugged her, and I said, I'm sorry. I didn't hurt your feelings. Say that. Hang on. Okay. We're getting there. I'm, cutting, I'm just hitting the highlights here. Uh, every woman in here right now is already taking your place, <laughs> taking, taking your side. See, see, see I, I opened the door for that. But anyway, I, I was hugging her, John. And I said, would, a, would $100 make you feel better? <laughs> or I was looking at you something. And I said, would $100 make you feel better? She said, no. I said, would 500 make you feel better? She's kind of, kind of got that little, that little soft, like, hurt voice going. And I said, would 500 make you feel better? She goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brother, you, you, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Know. <laughs> anyway, I, I survived. I made it here. It cost me. It's going to cost me. Well, there, there's a shopping trip and her future. Uh, I didn't mean it. I, would, I, didn't mean, I didn't mean nothing bad, Danny. But here I am. Trying to dig out. <laughs> so, money changes things. Okay, I'm getting, I'm pulling it back. I'm getting back on track. I'm pulling it back. <clears throat> I can't help it when the Holy Ghost gives me illustrations. <clears throat> but money changes things. Actually, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, money answers all things. Money answers all things. In today's world, I say to the child of God, you'll always have money. I say to the child of God, you'll always have money. And I'm going to speak in faith, you'll always have enough to meet every need and plenty left over. I speak that over you. It's all biblically based. I'm just not turning book, chapter, verse. Genesis 8. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. As long as the earth remains. He said, just as sure as spring follows winter, and summer follows spring, and fall follows the summer, there will be seed time and harvest. If you sow a seed, it will grow. And I've heard other ministers say it, and and they lived it out. What you have to give today may not be a harvest. 
but it's a seed that holds your harvest. Amen. I'm not trying to drain anyone's pocketbook. I've heard of pastors, they would just hammer people till they give the last penny. That's not me. <clears throat> That's not me. A lot of times I'll leave church, I've, I've give everything in my wallet to somebody before we get out of church. And so, but you know, the next week, I still have more to give. One, one, one day, I gave, I don't know, I gave two or, three, two or three individuals some money. And before I left, somebody handed me a check for way more than I give. <laughs> oh, you see, Pastor, you're laughing about that? Ha, 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 ha. I like it when the Holy Ghost gets on my money. See, Pastor, you sound a little crazy. I'm willing to be a fool for Christ's sake. That we may declare this gospel in a, in a place where there's a division. I'm kind of preaching my message. There's a division coming in the church of Jesus Christ. That's the bride of Christ. And the, and the modern church that professes godliness but denies the power. There's a division. There's a division between those that think they can continue to live any old way. <clears throat> but those who pursue righteousness. Hmm. Those who seek the kingdom of God first. All these things will be added unto them. For the kingdom of God is righteousness. Righteousness. God's right way of doing things, Mary. God's right way of doing things. See, Pastor, well, that, that's, that's hard to live that way. No, it's not. The, the first pastor's conference, I went at Kenneth Copeland Ministries in January 2009. And I was sitting just a few rows back from the front. And Happy Caldwell was preaching. He was the first speaker of the day. It was in January 2009. I never forgot this. He said, living right may not always be easy. May not always be easy, Melvin, but we make choices. He said, living right may not always be easy, but it will always be powerful. We've seen that work, my Nell. We've seen that work. Hmm. There's something in that. Living right may not always be easy. Because we have to make choices. Yes. I read something the other day <clears throat> that said, when we're born, we resemble our parents. But when we die, we resemble our decisions. Yes. Amen. Yep. See, Pastor, I... I mm, okay, I won't, I won't say that. I won't say that. Oh, Lord. Jeremiah, thank you guys for standing with me. Jeremiah 23, 29 says, His word is like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. What are you trying to say, Pastor? Pastor. I'm in a situation, Pastor, and it doesn't seem the word is working. What do I do? Keep hammering. Keep hammering it with the word. Keep hammering it with the word. Keep hammering it with... He says, Pastor, I'm, Pastor, I'm just struggling with this. I'm, I'm, I'm confessing the word, but I'm trying to shake this habit. Are you hitting it with the word? Keep hammering. Keep hammering it out. Keep hammering it out. See, Pastor, I, I just don't have any joy. Get off by yourself. And look at your problem. And just go, ha, 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 ha. I could do the wipeout laugh, but I'm not going to. Go ahead. I don't know if I can do it. I did do it in Walmart one day. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> We went in Walmart one day, and I told Natalie, I, said, I should just do this to see what happens. She said, I dare you. I dare you. I dare you. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. 
we got in about by the produce aisle, and I cut loose with it. Nobody even looked. No. That was normal. Yeah. That was normal behavior. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least y'all listen. I wasn't there. Nobody even paid attention. No. Nobody even looked. No. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Keep hammering it with the word of God. I'm telling you right now, Deb, I've used Isaiah 53, 5 on myself. I said, the word says, he bore my stripes. He bore my pain. He bore my healing by his stripes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. John, I was sitting in my recliner one day a couple of years ago, and and I was in pain. I mean, I, I was hurting. And I just got to work in it. I thought, praise God, I'm too good looking to be in this much pain. <laughs> and I kept, and I made myself laugh but when I said that. And I started feeling better. I said, Pastor, I've never been in a service like this. Well, I haven't either. <laughs> Glory to God. You know what? This this is new building kinds of service. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. This is new building kind of service. Come on. What kind of this is this is all of our instruments being filled up and the and the complete instrumentalists of the worship team. Yes. Mm. Wait a minute. They're they're hearing the call. Yeah, Holy Ghost is talking right now, directing, directing them. Mm. The Holy Ghost is calling children's workers. The Holy Ghost is calling children's workers. Those of you watching online, God is calling some of you to move here. Mm. Oh, any needs in your life right now, you are to say, I call my need met. Turn to Isaiah chapter 55. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. My Jesus. Hmm. See, Pastor, are you worried about the election? Nope. <clears throat> See, Pastor, are you worried about who might get elected? Nope. If you don't vote right, you're going to be worried. I'm talking about my king. I'm talking about my king. If you have your Bible, get, get your pen out. And I encourage you, if you don't have a, a notebook, to bring one. And I encourage you to bring a yellow highlighter and a, and a pen or a pencil to write with. So, but Pastor, I keep notes on my phone. <clears throat> that, that helps. I, tr- I tried to get into it, Missy, when everybody was doing it. Can I help? Let me have my phone. But sometimes my fat fingers don't spell right. <laughs> because sometimes autocorrect, you'll say God, it'll say hog. Yes. Because <laughs> when you text somebody hogs, going to bless you. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's, it'll do that. Or say things. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't say that. I didn't. Mm-mm. It's worse than what I said today. Yeah, you're right. I hear some of you women right now. Don't don't talk to her after church. I hear some of you right now. 
going to walk by and go make him pay. <laughs> yeah, they're going to. Guys, y'all could have jumped right in there. <laughs> but I tried, I tried typing my notes in during one of the pastor's conferences. And I don't know if you've ever seen Brother Copeland up close. God had to give him those eyes. Because they look different and they just look right through you. Well, anyway... I'm trying to type notes while he's speaking. And he comes over down the aisle like this, and he's looking at me. And I'm thinking, he thinks I'm on my phone texting or something. He's thinking. I I don't know what he's thinking. I'm thinking he's thinking. I was just writing notes, honest to, I want to say, Brother Copeland, honest to God, I'm not playing on my phone. <laughs> you know, like some of y'all do in church, you play games while I'm preaching. Right. <laughs> then you walk out and don't have any faith, right. but you played a game in church, and, and it bit you in the butt, because yeah, you needed some faith before you got home, but all you did was play a game. Yeah. Come on, come on. I don't, I didn't. It's not in, here, take my phone. <laughs> but the Spirit of God is, is, is bringing a, a division. The, the church, listen, the, the nominal, worldly, modern church is not the bride of Christ. They're not the bride of Christ. And I'm not pointing fingers and I'm not saying who is or is it because I don't know the condition of those people's hearts. But I know if you confess Jesus as Lord, you need to also be putting away sin and laying aside every sin that does so easily beset you and lay aside every distraction that besets you and every hindrance that gets in your way. Hallelujah. And learn Lay aside every weight and every, I mean, something that would hold you back. <clears throat> what holds you back? The Apostle Paul cried out in the book of Romans, who will deliver me from the body of this death? He was looking at how the Roman soldiers treated a prisoner that had kill someone, maybe a manslaughter charge, and they chained that dead body to that person's ankle, and they had to drag them around wherever they went. See, Pastor, they couldn't go very far, could they? Listen, child of God, you'll never go very far if you're chained to something that's dead. And has no effect. I believe the Holy Ghost is just speaking today and talking to some folks. I want our church to go up. I want our church to go up. I I do. I want our church to go up. And and there's some of you, you're not in the word like you need to be. You come to church faithfully, and God bless you for that. I believe you'll hear the word, and one day it'll crack open the things in your life and, and... You'll start getting in the word and become a faith person and join the ranks of those who who might look a little bloody from the battle, but we're winning. We're winning, praise God. We're winning. While I'm on that, Luke chapter 8 says that Jesus, let me find that just exactly. Verse 23 and 24, they were in a storm and the boat was being filled with water and they were afraid of the storm and Jesus rebuked the storm, he rebuked the winds and he rebuked the waves. So I want us right now as a body 
to speak to Milton. Isn't that the one? Yes. You, you already spoke to it. Our worship leader already spoke and declared and decreed over Milton that it's stop and desist. Yes. In Jesus' name, yes. Yes. we speak to you, Milton. Yes. Stop right now and burn yourself out. Yes. Spin yourself out. Yes. We declare you shall not hit Florida again. You shall not hit landfall again. Father, we thank you right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost over Milton. We speak. This is this is the south, I believe, and so we pray in that direction. Shiko Romo Bambrakandehe. Sambrakandehe sin stop in Jesus' name. Shubba Baba ke seneke. Stop in Jesus' name. Shkolomo Namaka. And to those that have been affected, we pray Micah 7 and 8 over you. Micah 7 and 8. Rejoice not over me, mine enemy, for I shall arise again. Amen. Praise God. Rejoice not over me, storms, for I will rise again. Amen. And what the enemy has stolen, we require you to pay seven times over what the word says. When the thief comes to steal, and he will, the Bible says he's also required to pay so we speak with Luke chapter 10 authority. We require you to pay back what you've stolen seven times over. I pray property value goes up and not down. Hallelujah. I pray homes go up in value and not down. In Jesus' name, I pray those hurting in North Carolina. <clears throat> we speak Holy Ghost. Only you can do that. And there's so much... If, if I can speak, if I can speak right now, can I, can I say just a moment about North Carolina? I don't know everything going on there. I know a couple of people through being a Facebook connection that, are, that drive trucks and they're taking truckloads of supplies there. But FEMA has confiscated a lot of the individual's uh, goods that they're taking to... Uh, to bring relief to areas. They're confiscating their goods. <clears throat> and you can't even do GoFundMe pages anymore because they've confiscated that money because they don't know if it's being used appropriately. They won't bother churches. And they haven't bothered Samaritan's purse. But I'm telling you right now, be careful who you send your money to. Yeah. And also there's a group uh, <clears throat> of nonprofits out there that are staging photo shoots with goods like going to be packed in when in reality they're not doing anything but staging a photo shoot so they can put that they're a 501c3 and they're raising money to send to these affected areas. That's all they're doing. They're not helping anybody. They're not helping anyone. And I, I've checked some of this, okay? So... Our government, they're not your friend. No, they're not. <clears throat> they not your friend. Pastor, well, they, they, they give me something. They will require something. Right. And I say to you today, learn to require of the enemy back. You've stolen it, put it back. Right, You've stolen it, put it back. Yeah. You've stolen it, put it back. Yeah. Can I tell Lester Summerall's story? He was in South America ministering. And that, that day, a witch doctor challenged him because he was trying to minister to a village. Well, Lester Summerall is a great, he's gone on to be with the Lord, but a great, great man of faith. He was one that said he, the Lord told him he couldn't minister to somebody that was hungry. So he bought cargo planes and ships to send food. So he always fed people before he preached. 
but he, this, he, he was ministering this village, and the witch doctor challenged him. And uh, he spoke some uh, witchcraft ritual. And there's a lot of witchcraft going on today, and they're not dressed in a big pointy hat riding a broom. A lot of witchcraft in America. Uh, this is the month for it. It's Halloween is the witch's sacred holiday. So anyway, he spoke over this frog, and the frog died. And he told Summerall, let's see your God beat, the, beat that. And he just said, Jesus, raise him up again. So the frog rolled over and hopped off. Well, that night, he said he was in his room, and the windows opened, and a curtain started coming in with a breeze and a foul smell. The devil stinks. And he brought a foul smell in the room. He said his bed started shaking. And it moved across the room. And he began to rebuke it. Told him to get out. And the bed stopped shaking. And the wind started blowing and the curtain started blowing to the outside. And he said, in a few seconds, Lester all thought about it. He goes, get back here. The bed was against the wall when you came in. Put it back. The bed started shaking and moved back over against the wall. He said, now get out. We need to learn our rights. Get, order his books. Lester Summerall, order his books and tapes. Where's Greg? Greg and I sat in one of his services one time. First two and a half hour sermon I ever sat under. I'm sitting there like this. We need some put it back stories. When you came in, I was healthy. Put it back. Get out. Jesus is the healer. We just have to tell the devil to get out. Hmm. Isaiah 55 11. Would you put that up for me, please? Isaiah 55, 11. You helping me preach? You helping me, man. <laughs> you standing in your place. Glory. Mm, Shine bye bye. Glory. Glory, 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 glory. Faithful man. Glory to God. Rama see Glory. Ye yes darash de ki daraka da da. Mm. Ah. Mm. Glory. Glory. So shall my word be. that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. It pleases God for you to be healed. But his word going out of his mouth, can we look at this a minute? This is his word that should be going out of our mouth. Isaiah 53, 5, please. This is all not in my notes. This message. Hmm. Hey, 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 God, bye-bye. Yes, corona, no, so nine. Ooh, 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 so nine, yeah. Kata, hey, hey. Every need met, he, he. And more, more than enough. Hmm, I die. Ooh, so tight, I die, I die, guys. Much that I got there. Ooh, shh, shh. Hmm. Hmm. Glory. Where am I at? But he, Jesus, was wounded for our transgressions. 
He was beaten. Spear was thrust in his side. Thorns embedded in his skull. He was bruised. They beat him. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Now he's called the Prince of Peace. The Bible says, Colossians 3.15, we're led by peace. We speak peace. The angels came from heaven, the birth of Jesus. Peace on earth. Woo, where are we at right now? Where are we at right now? We're on earth. Peace on earth. Good will toward men. <sighs> Father, we thank you. Chastisement of our peace was upon him. That word peace means the absence of conflict. <laughs> On the inside, it can be going on all around you, but on the inside, the storm can be raging, but right here, there's peace. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus said in the world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world, and I leave peace unto you, not as the world gives, but my peace. Mm. Right now, to someone who's ill, I speak divine peace, powerful Holy Ghost peace, word of God, peace over you. Peace that overcomes in the middle of your tribulation. Jesus said in the world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. You say, well, that's Jesus. Well, where's Jesus at? In you. By spirit, he's in you. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Colossians 2, 6 said, and we're raised up together and made to sit with him in heavenly places. You should get technical about this. I'm not educated enough to say a whole bunch of nice, sweet, savory things. I just have to get technical and say what the Word says. Amen. The next part of that, Isaiah 53, 5. <clears throat> What's the part before that? And with his stripes, with his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. You had a little bit of a scare, and I speak peace over you. Thank you, Jesus. God, I, 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 I. And I speak peace because healing is yours. Mm. Glory to God. Father, there's some Holy Ghost good times going on in here now. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Pastor, my job doesn't look good. Well, the one you're getting does. Hallelujah. The one you're being promoted to does. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Divine promotions. <clears throat> Divine promotions. Promotions so good it'll make you sick when you get it. I don't mean a bad kind of sick. Just a It'll make you feel like you're going to throw up. It'll be so good. I've had that happen. <clears throat> be just nauseated all night long. But in the morning, when the money started coming in, <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. You need to laugh about your money. You need to laugh about your lack because the money's going to fill it up and you laugh when it comes in. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. You Pastor, what are you doing? I'm trying to give you some technical information that will help in you sharpen your knife, help you sharpen your sword, and help you load your spiritual gun. Amen? Hallelujah. And like quit firing rounds off out there just everywhere. <clears throat> like people go duck hunting, they just shoot up there, hope they hit something. You get a rifle, you got to aim at the target. You got one, one bullet going down range. Mm. I'm not duck hunting. I'm shooting the target. I don't know where all this comes from. There's 52 years behind that. My, out of my mouth. The word going out of my mouth. The word going out of my mouth. The word going out of my mouth says, by his stripes I'm healed. Amen. Going out of my mouth. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. Somebody get happy. <laughs> Glory. Ye shut up my heart. Glory to God. Hey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm. Well, there it is. Hallelujah. Ha. <laughs> well, we're about two rows into it here. <laughs> hey. Hey. Woo. Let's just take a moment. Let Holy Ghost laughter begin to take over. Hey. Hi. Ha. 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 Hey, yes, Jesus. <laughs> Even snorking. <Hey. laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Jesus. Whew. Just let her go. Just let her go. Just let her go. Hallelujah. Um, you're snorking with her. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, well, I've seen Holy Ghost laughter, and today I've seen Holy Ghost snorking. Glory. Oh. Well, we need to receive tithe and offering. <clears throat> and uh, the scripture says, give cheerfully. So we're still in the flow. We're still in the flow. Yeah, that's right, Christy. We're still in the flow. Giving cheerfully. Hallelujah. And... and not only tithe and offering, but we're going to send hurricane relief to Kim, Kim Leggett. She's been a faithful giver in our ministry for years and years. Faithful, tremendous giver. And the storm hit her, hit her hard. So I want us, I want us to give back. I want us to give back. So in her. We're going to do that today. <clears throat> We're going to do our part. Okay? We're going to do our part. Lord Jesus. Whew. It's dangerous when I get like this. <clears throat> My wallet can walk out thinner. <clears throat> I just got reminded it is already thinner. <laughs> $500 thinner. <laughs> Guys, I just want to tell you <clears throat> what you say can cost you. <clears throat> I 
Uh, that's all right. That's good. That's yours. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Lord, we, I'm thankful we can have a good time at church and be serious and strict about your word. I'm going to say one thing, and I'll probably say something else too. But the Antichrist, John, John said in 1 John, is in the world today. He's alive. He's in the world today. And the Antichrist is trying to uh, divide the world and Christians. He's trying to push Christians over here and trying to get the church world to peacefully coexist with evil. Trying to peacefully coexist with evil. You can't do that. Jesus said you've got to choose. Serve me or not. The Apostle Paul had a man traveling with him, Demas. Can you imagine traveling with a great Apostle Paul? And he said, he forsook me. He's forsaken me because he loves this present world more. He, he goes on to say again, in the last days, there will be some <clears throat> that deny God. They will talk about being godly, but deny the presence of God. They'll deny it. We're there. I'm glad for a great church. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm glad for a church that prays for me. Yes, sir. Amen. Everybody in the back row praying for me? Yes. Everybody in the front row praying for me? Yes, sir. Amen. Everybody sandwiched in the middle praying for me? Yes. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. Well, that's why we have a great church. Yes, sir. And it's a church we're going we're gonna to help. We're going to help uh, in sowing today. And by the grace of God, I, I'm just so thankful for these opportunities. See, Pastor, the ushers have been up there all day. Well, we're going to, I don't know if I already give you. No, we have a check on that. Okay. <clears throat> Lord, in an atmosphere of giving, something's going to take, great miracles take place. <clears throat> great miracles take place. I've been in services where people just almost run up. They'd hurry up and just throw money on the altar. Just throw, just throw money on the altar after offerings. And, and one pastor's conference, uh, one of the first couple or three I went to, maybe the could have been the first one. But anyway, uh, I, I was kind of new to some of that, to, to, real, to real extravagant giving. And uh, how many have heard of Phil Driscoll? Mm -hmm. yeah. Heard him play before? Man, he's powerful. Yeah. Powerful on the, on the trumpet. If, if you've never heard him, go home and get on YouTube and listen to him. Uh, well, anyway, uh, the government got after him, and he spent a few months in prison. And uh, so Brother Copeland got, you know, went, flew in uh, to the prison, I think, in, in Atlanta, and uh, met Phil and took him back and began ministering to him. But great things happened to Phil, his story, while he was in prison. Uh, got recording contracts while he was in prison. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, Brother Copeland was talking one night, and he goes in the service, at the end of service, I mean, after offering time, he said, Phil, come up here. And he, he came up to where Brother Copeland was at. He said, the Lord just said, you're going to travel around the world. And a few months later, I saw where he, a, a couple of years later, I saw where he had. But he said, you're going to travel around the world. And he said, to do that, you need, uh, you need a, a plane. And he said, but to have a plane, you've got to have your pilot's license, and I'm going to pay for that, for your training. I don't know what you call it, but I guess it's expensive to go through the the pilot training, and uh, <clears throat> George Pearson comes up uh, and said, you're going to need some, some money while you're studying for that. Here's a check for $10,000. I thought, ooh. 
Now, I'm, I'm toward the back, and I'm kind of perking up now. <laughs> I'm listening. And uh, then uh, Dennis, Dennis Burke comes over and says, uh, if you're going to get your pilot's license so you can fly, you're going to need a plane. I want to give you my, my jet. You had me at 10,000. You, you really got me now. And somebody else came over and said, that fuel costs a lot. Here's a check for several more thousand. And he goes, if, uh, if y'all want to give toward, toward Phil and his ministry and how the Lord's restoring him, come on and give. And hundreds of people just ran up. I thought, I'm going I'm to go too. I'm, I'm going to get in on this. I'm pulling my wallet out. and Man, I just got swept up. I mean, the crowd just, I don't know how much came in. But it was amazing. What, what a powerful feeling. <clears throat> like when God says, no matter what you've done, I can restore you in a moment. I believe we're coming in the days that restoration to people who thought they had no hope and could never be used of God again, they'll be restored in a, in a service, in one service. Hallelujah to God. I believe that needs will be met in one service. And I've said it last week and I'm saying it again this week. We're coming into a time that New Life Fellowship will be a church where there will be no lack. Church in Council Bluffs, Iowa. 